Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the lecture this morning, and welcome to Music Enrichment Week. Um, we've got loads going on this week. You'll hear music in the corridors. There will be lectures going on, and we've got a recital this evening, and, and, and a lecture actually from a, from a jazz singer on Thursday in here, um, all the way from the UK, who's going to be talking to us about professional jazz singing as well. But today is about the birth of loud. It's about guitars, and it's about one of the most influential instruments ever created. Now, loud. You just heard loud. ACDC, one of the most successful rock bands ever. And I don't think, in fact, I know that none of those guitarists would be happy with the guitars of the 1930s and the 1940s, which basically were like this. Sound wasn't very good. 
the sound wasn't very good at all, but he was able to be heard. And then now the guitar could start to hold its own with the harmonicas, the trumpets, the trombones, the pianos, which are much louder, physically much louder. Okay, and this guy, no offender, he moved quickly, incredibly quickly. America at this time was a really, really dynamic place. Those of you who know your, your global history, okay, historians amongst you, and when you get into the 19, well, certainly into the 1950s, late 40s, 50s, my goodness me, America is, is supercharged, okay, with all sorts of stimuli, economically, etc., and, and it's a really uh, buzzing place. So manufacturing things was, was easy, relatively easy compared to the last few decades. And we started to get this guy, the offender, and a couple of friends, they started to put together what became an iconic instrument. One of the big physical differences between this and this, only at NLCX, because I walked around the department this morning and quite an original um, American made strap plaster left by a student just around the corridor. But this is, uh, so this is basically the same as that 1956. Spend a Stratocaster, these are about four thousand dollars, and and it has hardly changed. And in that decade, he created a design icon. It just looks right, and it's played by pop artists, it's played by rock artists, heavy metal artists. The Stratocaster is a design classic, a bit like the Beetle or some of the Apple products. And it is solid. It's quite heavy. It's a really solid bit of. Um, um, bit of kit. And the key thing though is what the offender did. He turned that phonograph needle into these devices here, which are called hiccups, which pick up the vibrations of the strings in a more refined way to the phonograph needle and are able to transmit the amplifiers to create the sound that we know so much today. Okay? So this is, is, is one of the instruments that really helps time to take off. This is the definition of loud in popular music. We also had get a rival. Now if you know rivalry you can really drive up standards and they can really good competition just helps things to move on very quickly. We had another icon also in the 1950s by a company called Gibson, which you may well have heard of, and a guy called Les, Les Paul who created a guitar that could compete with the Stratocaster. Okay? And these were amazing new devices in the 1950s. Look at that. That guitar almost looks like halfway between a classic guitar and a, an electric guitar. But these were the these were the, the guitars that were able to have the, the volume, the sound, to be able to be heard. And there's no pickup. Okay, so very quickly, these became the loud icons. The, 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 the instruments that the, the short guitarists really wanted to get their hands on and play, and they are so similar. In fact, you can get identical instruments today, and they're very similar to, to a lot of guitars that are made today. Okay. Also, very quickly, the guitar, the electric guitar, led to other instruments. We've got a, a bass there, the electric bass. This instrument in the middle is also made by Fender. It's a Fender Rhodes. It's a very, very cool early keyboard. Makes an amazing sound. And vintage, vintage instruments like this are really, really sought after to get that, that original sound. Um, synthesizers can create a good copy, but they're nothing like the originals. And these are in the 1950s, and they're still being copied and used today. And then, of course, we've got the, the um, five-piece drum kit. Um, and this all came together to create what we now know as a rock band. Okay. Tell me, what was happening in the 1950s? What was happening in the 1950s in, in Korea? Yes, Jim Matt. Yeah, and yes, that's a lot of debris around from that actual fighting from the war. 
in 1950s in Britain, we were recovering from a war fairly well, actually. There was quite a lot of stiffness in, in, in Europe. Britain wasn't doing as well as the rest of Europe, but we were doing pretty well. And we we're starting to recover, and, and there's starting to be some optimism post Second World War. But in America, as I've said, things were going ballistic. They were going supercharged, and things were taking off hugely. Okay, so we think about managing these two things that are going on. We've got this amazingly bright economy, we've got things like very low unemployment because everyone's got jobs, we need to rebuild the, the country. Manufacturing is taking off after the, low, after the, um, the Great Depression. Um, people need things. The gross domestic, domestic product, gross domestic product, tripled in the 10 years after the war. People had cash to burn. Money flowed through the US like no other time. So people, and this is the 1950s, remember, the 1950s, Many, many people in America had cars, uh, had cars, they had phones on a wire, refrigerators, air conditioning in homes, dishwashers were widely used, vacuum cleaners, and we had suburban life. Okay, away from the city centres and these new, beautiful places in suburbia were being created. They were being created in other parts of the world, but in America they were decades ahead in terms of creature comforts. Which perhaps we could advantage with paying the price for a bit today, but American 1950s was turbocharged. Also in the 1950s, we had a new section of society. Yes, there was someone tell me what that new section of society was in, in, uh, in American 1950s. Mm -hmm. That new demographic. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a clue. You, you are one. What was the phrase that was being coined? Maybe year seven, you can now think of year thirteen. Here, what was the what was the demographic? What was the section of society what was, that was being defined in the 1950s? Due to extra money, freedoms. Yes. No, that's not what I'm thinking of in this in this, um, in, in this question. Have another go. Yes. Pardon. Ladder. Children. children, kind of. Old children, year seven, you're starting to become one. Year 13, you definitely are one. You are? You're, you're a teenager. Good boy. Very good. Teenagers. Okay, teenagers are a thing. They've been a thing for 70 years, but not until the 1950s were teenagers a, a defined demographic. You'd have been working. You've been working by the time you were 13 or 14, unless you're very, very rich. Okay? So, where are we? 34, let's go. Okay, we had teenagers and teenagers with money to spend. Parents were able to give them money, so you were able to buy records in the 1950s. Okay, records are classic discs, some of you know about them, the adult keys that your mums and dads might nostalgically buy and have in your apartments back home. Those were a thing in the 1950s, and you were buying them in the hundreds of thousands, even millions. Okay, so we had rock and roll. We had rock and roll in the 1950s. And this guy is? Elvis Presley, good. And we had. Start for the house, you want to? Chuck Berry. And we had. Anyone? A guy called Buddy Holly. And you would, you would know their songs, you heard them, Elvis, I'm sure you know a number of their pieces. Um, Chuck Berry, you will definitely recognise this, I would have thought. <laughs>
Mr. Tamlin for the wonderful presentation on the history of guitars. Right, so this is an example of a modern guitar. It has modern electronics, modern parts such as the neck, which is built for fast playability, modern tuners, uh, modern bridge, and everything else, all from hourless engineering from the past, which has led to this awesome crafting of this instrument. Right, so staff members and students, does anyone know who this guy on the wall is? Can I have a raise of hands? Yes, you? Bit louder? Uh, not quite. Does anyone else have a guess? Yes, you? Not quite. I have one last guess from anyone. Mr. Tamlin? Yes, that's right. That's Eddie Van Halen, one of the most influential guitar players of all time. And as the name says, he was the founder and the guitarist of the famous band Van Halen. And Van, the band Van Halen, they were a huge influence to rock music in general. They have popularized studi uh, stadium rock and their music spread all throughout the world and it was kind of a new step up for the whole genre by itself. And the man Eddie Van Halen, he was the pioneer of a modern guitar technique called tapping. The classical, te the classical technique for playing notes on a guitar is either to pluck each note, but tapping involves using your right hand to tap a note and the note will eventually ring out due to the, the only way to show you this is to demonstrate it. So as I said, the classical method of playing notes on the guitar is to pluck each note. But on the other hand, you can tap notes by using this finger. From this, Eddie has created his famous, like all-time famous solo called Eruption. And I don't remember how it goes like exactly, but here's kind of a basic sense of it. So this is eruption, and <laughs> have the next slide. Legato is a famous technique in all, all kinds of music, from classical music, ranging all the way to modern music. But the pioneering, of, the pioneering of this technique on guitar hasn't been too long. And linking well from tapping, legato can be tapped or plucked and can be used in many ways. And combined with tapping, which gives you a lot more range of notes, you could even play piano pieces on the guitar, such as Moonlight Sonata, Third Movement. I butchered that, sorry, but if you got the idea, then that's great. So moving on, I have a song which demonstrates all these techniques shown. And yeah, hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
superb, superb playing king. And thank you all very much for listening this morning. Have a great day. Thank you.